Just 10 days ago, the total number of COVID-19 cases around the world was about 110,000, and 80% of those had come from mainland China. Now, 10 days later, we are at double that number. That is, we went from 110,000 to 220,000 in just 10 days. But growth is not uniform across countries. In fact, in China, there have only been a few hundred cases in the last week. But in the rest of the world, outside of China, we've gone from 30,000 cases to about 140,000 cases. That's a more than 400% increase in only 10 days. And those 100,000 new cases, 100,000 new cases in 10 days, it's almost certainly a vast underestimate because there are a lot of people who may not have been diagnosed but are infected and infectious. In the early days of an outbreak, raw numbers matter more than percentages. And the reason why is because contagion generally stems from just a few foci. And that's why the trajectories and the number of cases are so similar across countries with very different population sizes. Comparing the number of cases by location is very messy because of differences in health-seeking behavior and differences in testing rates. In other words, we don't know how many cases there are. Not even close. So maybe deaths instead of cases is a better metric for measuring the magnitude of this pandemic. Let's take a look at deaths. 10 days ago, outside of China, there had been only 702 deaths. And now, 10 days later, that number is closer to 5,000. That's a 7x increase in 10 days. But there are a few problems with death. One, age structures are very different in different populations. Two, health service quality differs across countries. Three, there's greater lag. That is, the time it takes to go from exposure to death can be very long. Five to ten days from infection to symptom onset, another week from symptom onset to becoming a severe case, another few days from having become a severe case to dying. So a lag of, let's say, three weeks. We can use deaths as a proxy for contagion, but when we do, we're not really measuring how bad the outbreak is now. We're measuring how bad it was a few weeks ago. It's kind of like driving a car while only looking out of the rear view window. You can see where you've gone, but you can't really see where you're going. So to know where we're going, we have to use math, models, statistics. And as they say, all models are wrong, but some are useful. And what the models say is that the number of cases, and therefore by extension, the number of deaths, is going to continue to grow exponentially until the effect of our current control measures begin to kick in. So the situation is very serious and it's going to get worse. And we, society, government, parents, scientists, we need to be real about this. We need to be real about expectations and we also need to be real about the magnitude of this crisis. The numbers are bad, but they're not hopeless. What we've seen in a few Asian countries is that when radical measures are taken, that leads to a radical reduction in the growth trajectories. Public health authorities have to do their part, but we, society at large, can help them. We can save the lives of the people we know and love, and we can save the lives of strangers by just staying home, listening to health authorities, practicing social distancing. We are all links in the chains of disease transmission. And when we isolate, what we do is break those chains. By just staying home, we are no longer a stepping stone for the virus to jump from someone through you to someone vulnerable. Social distancing. There is no easier way to save lives.